yeah, we are back on Niger Super Fans Forum. I hope you had an awesome weekend. Um, of course, I had a sweet time to myself. My name is Olua Femina Shaolu. And today on the show, so much on our plate to uh, feed on. But of course, where else uh, are we supposed to begin rather than in India? But before we get down to business, uh, James Iberibi joins me in the studio. James, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you for me. How was the weekend? Yeah, thank God. Action packed, as yep. usual, as yeah. always. Exactly. Um, Arsenal, for they, they dropped their first point. Uh, that was the first the draw. Sec second, the first second time they're dropping points yeah. this season. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, I hope maybe. Is that you're looking down oh, uh, No, yeah, I expected <laughs> them to take advantage of, you know, <laughs> their, you know, uh, Chelsea and Man United drew, so I expected them to. To take advantage of that slip up, but they, they look fatigued, the eyes when I watch the game. But hopefully they will, they, will, they will pick up when they play Nottingham Forest. Okay, where else are we supposed to start than <coughs> India, where of course our flamingos, flamingos yeah. are doing well, first semi finals, the first time in history, and uh, they were not given the chance against the United States of America. Yeah. But uh, thank God to penalty shootout. And of course, they will now face. I was hoping that they were going to face Tanzania, <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, uh, Tanzania they couldn't get cope with the, the the firepower of uh, Colombians. And now the flamingos will be facing a uh, Colombian Wednesday. Yeah, uh, the setup of uh, these uh, flamingos it takes me back to 2010 um, when uh, I think it's taking a kind of a, a, a similar path which the Fla Falconers took in 2010, when they got to the final of the Under-20 <laughs> World Cup. Mm -hmm. I remember after making it from the group stage, they Those played... Also Germany, right? They played United States in the quarterfinals. They defeated yes. United States for penalties. Mm -hmm. They now played Colombia in the semi-final okay. before they now made Germany. Germany so final. it's almost a similar path. And Germany also beat Brazil in the, in the uh, quarterfinals. So Brazil will be... Uh, Germany will be playing Spain in the yeah. other semi-final in no, this no, tournament. If, yeah, so... It's almost so the same. That it's it's like a, this, it's a, we call it deja vu. Mm -hmm. Something that happened before, you know. So, um, uh, congratulations to the foul, uh, flamingos. Though I didn't uh, give them much um, hope. I would, I would like because you know playing against the United States. Mm -hmm. you remember when we did the preview, we we, we spoke about their uh, their how good they are when it comes to the final third. You know, but they, they came up against a flamingo team that was very determined. They were ready to break that quarterfinal jinx, mm -hmm. which they eventually did. And uh, even during the shootout, they were even lucky too, because one of their players, she missed, but luckily for Va, she had to retake and she scored. And I remember again, 2010, uh, what's her name? Esther Sunday. She, she, during that 2010, for Falconets, and, and when they played against the USA, she missed a penalty, had to retake it. So, <laughs> that's if history is repeating but itself. Time, I hope that we won't lose the final. It's, it's, exactly. You still have Colombia to play yeah. against. So, the good thing about the Falcons, uh, the Flamingos, is they played against some of the big teams. Remember, they started off with Germany, they were unlucky to lose. They were able to gather themselves, beat um, New Zealand, they defeated uh, uh, Chile. The big test, uh, USA, they were able to overcome them, you know. So now they are going to play against Colombia. And, you know, when you put Colombia and the United States side by side, at least you know that uh, you want to give the Flamingos the edge, judging by from where they are coming from, you know. So um, let's just hope that uh, the. Well, we, can able to, that. we can still underestimate the Colombians as well. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, but yeah. have also done very well in this tournament. Um, yeah. For them to be, yeah, for them to even know, get to the. They the, play with the, the, the defeated team. France. Yeah. Remember, they defeated yeah. France, you know. So it goes to show that at least it's a learning curve for them. They, they were able to make it uh, to the quarterfinals, a debutant. And they can hold their head high. Exactly, you know. So. Um, now the Falco, the Flamingos, uh, I keep calling them the Falcons. The Flamingos now they were played against in Colombia, so uh, we just pray that um, they were able to build on the, the game they, they had against the United States. And uh, let's see if they can go one for that one one Let's more step, you know, to make it to the final. And who knows, we, we might become the first African team to win the Under-17 World Cup. And of course, the coach of Flamingos, uh, Bankole Lowo Kerry, has said that um, uh, they they wouldn't just get to the semi-final and to get knocked out at this stage. So he, he has promised that uh, they will do what they can to make the country proud, perhaps get to the final. If possibly they face Germany again, remember they lost 2-1 to Germany in their uh, opening group game. Yeah. But this time, maybe they will get one over uh, the Europeans. Uh, uh, James, let's talk about the draws for the uh, FIFA Women's World Cup. Yeah. We know that will be taking place in New Zealand and uh, Australia. And of course, Nigeria in the, in the Group B, alongside Canada, Republic of Ireland, and of course, the, one of the hosts, the host uh, Australia. Australia. Yeah. And of course, in, in Group C, we have uh, Spain, Zambia, 
Japan and Costa Rica. I think it's, it's, it's going to be a tough one. Mm. Tough one for the Zambians. And far in group, um, uh, group G, we have uh, South Africa, of course, African champions. They'll be facing Sweden, Italy and Argentina. James, quickly. Well, I think uh, this Falcons group, ah, it's a bit tough because they're playing against one of the hosts and Australia, they, they have a reputation. And the Women's World Cup, they've been doing well. Though they've never won any major uh, title. Maybe they were talking about the World Cup or the Olympics. The Canadians, they are reigning Olympic champions. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the uh, Republic of Ireland, mm -hmm. I've checked their stats. They've not lost. I think they've gone five games without defeat in their last uh, five uh, encounters. But they will be making their debut at the World Cup. Um, for Canada, um, they played against the Falcons in April this year. Two-legged affairs, yeah. yeah, in the friendly game, and um, they, they won the first uh, tie 2-0, drew. They, they, they escaped the second, yeah. uh, you know, so... By, and this is, yeah, so this is a team, the... Uh, and the, 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 the Falcons played against Australia. The last time they met at the World Stage was 2015, when the, the, the Australian won 2-0. You know, so these are teams, the Falcons, uh, apart from the uh, Republic of Ireland, Canada and Australia, they are, these are teams the Falcons have played against. They know them and um, I just uh, hope they'll be able to learn one or two teams from the friendly games they've played. But, but, but sorry, it, it's not like we do not have a team. James. Yeah, we do. But the, the, the worry of most Nigerians is the, the technical. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because we know what we said about the world draw. No. Because we have not seen any improvement mm. in this the, team. The Falcons have gone like five straight games There yeah, was now. outing at the... At the three. Uh, it has never happened before. The Falcons losing three games at the uh, Wafcon. It has never happened before. And they've gone five straight games without a, um, a win. Yeah, they've really. lost all, all the games that they've played. Five straight uh, defeats. You know, so that's the, the coach has been a worry. You know, a lot of people have like they've lost hope in the in the in, in the coach in the coaching crew. You know, so I, I don't know. We we'll just have to. We can't, you can't say you want uh, to no, sack. Well, yeah, it's too late for us to it's cry too now. It's too late for him. But the thing is, from now to um, is it June or July the World Cup? I don't know if the uh, NFF will want to like have a rethink and maybe bring in somebody. Now that we even have a new a new management on board. Yeah, yeah because um, the, the man has uh, he has not really shown. I don't, see, I don't, I've watched the team play. I've not really seen much improvement. I see they, are they keep doing the same thing, the same tactical error, the same. But this seems like a pattern. I think, sorry, I think um, Thomas Denebi even tried. At least he won the WAFCON. Yeah. But, and even though we didn't see the improvement that mm. we wanted, yeah. but this underworld drum, it seems we've it, gone the, the step backward. Backward, like 10 steps backward. You know, when Denebi took over, he, he, made, um, some, he, he made a statement. I remember his, what was his first game for the Falcons when they played against France. They lost 8 0. You know, so it said a lot of things that though the Falcons parade talented players, but there are so many things they are lacking, tactical and he made mention of some of those things. And at least he beat South Africa in that final. Exactly, you know. So he said this team still need a lot of work, but I, I think I felt we were just too impatient after the World Cup. They just sacked him, and I took the team to the round of 16. You know, so I felt sometimes I think the, what the Falcons need is continuity. Just okay. I had this coach. I'm so okay. You want to give me like five year uh, program mm -hmm. to build, you know, not just um, you just hire and fight. look at the South African coach, uh, Ellis. Ellis. She has been with this team mm -hmm. for how many years now, you know. So is it is she is the coach who, who knows She's the been players. Able to build, build. So you need the, the for, for me. I think the Falcons need a coach that will build. We have players coming up. There are six fantastic players from the Fl Flamingos, and we've seen some from, from the Falconets who have yeah, joined the, the you know, the so they need now. that coach who will come in and, and just them. integrate and, and f come up with a solid team, because the players are there, but when you have a, a coach who doesn't, like, who doesn't even know what he's doing, the team, the team keeps losing the scandalously. Is a for him. It's, it's a part-time yeah. job. So I, I think after the World Cup, they should just allow him to go. Let's, let's just say, okay, we want to start afresh. You know, there's nothing bad when you, want, when you start from the scratch. At least you know that you are trying to build. You have very young players who are coming up, so you just give them that, that opportunity to, to, to work with a new coach so that you're able to, to take them to the next level. Because this idea of just enter the play against the big teams, they just keep losing and keep losing. I mean, it doesn't have confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay, James, still over the weekend, uh, of course, Ibrahim Gusau, the new NFL president, inaugurated the Interim Management Committee for the uh, MPFL. But before we get to that, let's talk about um, uh, the under-23 uh, AFCON qualifier. Yeah. Of course, um, one one against Tanzania away from home, and uh, this particular man, Asalisu Yusuf, he has so much question about about him. Remember, because mm. people, a lot of people have questioned his, his um, capability yeah. to even coach the the, the 
uh, the home base Eagles, as well as even retaining his job as yeah. the assistant coach of the Super Eagles. But what? How did the result come to you? Well, um, I think the, the the to me, I think I kudos to them because um, this is their first competitive game. Was it, it dicey? Because that reminds me of uh, uh, the play of World Cup play of against. No, Canada. this one is one one. At least they have they, they scored away. Okay. So coming home, at least a goalless draw will be okay. Yeah, they played against the Tanzanian team who, who, who played uh, was it South Sudan in the first round. At least that was a team that that had played like competitive games that should be in shape and, and for them to go away to even get a draw. I mean, they, they considered them the 77th minute, mm -hmm. you know. So for me, uh, kudos to them. They, they, they tried. Uh, it's not easy to go away, you know, to, to, to get results, especially in Africa. Yeah. You know, so I don't know, maybe because it's Tanzania. So I just hope they will come <laughs> I just hope they will come back home to finish up and uh, let's see uh, where, where they take it up from here. But uh, it's a good one. The, the result is not a bad one. And um, I but I have my question mark about the coach. I mean we I believe we have other interesting, <laughs> you know, exciting coaches in the league. Why is this uh Salis use all the time? This assistant coach of the Super Eagles. Home base uh, uh, Super Eagles coach now they're under 23. I see we don't have, I mean, other coaches who can take up this job. I mean, he, he, he doesn't speak well, but um, I think he was able to get a result away. So let's just hope that they come home and they finish up and, and uh, at least you clear the path for them to qualify for the AFCON uh, uh, in Algeria next year. And you know, that's a qualifier for the Olympics. So you can't afford to, to slip up at, at any point now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, like we said, James. Uh, the Nigeria Professional Football League 2022-2023 season, we do not know when it will it is, begin. Yeah. When most leagues, even in Africa, they are almost um, approaching the, the, the halfway the point. Stage, yeah. The halfway point now. Now, Gusau has told them the interim management committee uh, to sit down, draw a plan, you know, for the league, uh, you know, uh, the framework, the legal framework, the. Um, put the, the matches on TV, mm. uh, talk about remuneration for players. They should make sure that clubs do the needful. Then the pitches also, he said they should make sure that the pitches are camera friendly. Then just, that takes me to the question that, then what has the LMC under Sheo Diko been doing for the past eight years? It's, it's more like we are starting from the scratch. Yeah. So what have Sheo Diko and Co been doing for the past eight years that the LMC was in charge of the league? Well, uh, for me, the, the, the truth is, um, fine, uh, a new, bo a new uh, body is, uh, is up and running now. And you, this statements like this are what we expect from a new body. Uh, let's get it but on these TV. But these are the problem. The, the thing is the, the enforcement. League. I mean, it's not, it's not just to come out and tell us it should be on TV. Uh, the, the grasses should be uh, camera so the green for uh, camera no, We've heard all those things before. We've seen, okay, they say any team that uh, maybe they, they, they attack the referee, they, they will do this. We keep hearing. The, 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 the thing there is, when things like this happen and some of these club sides, they, they, they go against all these um, laid down uh, rules or whatever. I mean, you come hard on them, but you don't see all these things as if some clubs are sacred cows that you, you don't touch them, even though when they, when, they, when they go against the rules, the laid down but, rules. LMC might want to disagree with you because we saw what happened to Canopy last, last season. That uh, the, the point deduction and eventually led to their relegation. How, how, how often do they do all these things? How often, the thing is, you, 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 okay, you've done it to Kano Pillars. What about that club? You have to keep. It's about consistency. You know that you do it now, then you now relax because these things it has been happening. No matter the kind of law, the kind of threat they come out with, all these things keeps about. Once you you are consistent with all this punishment, you deduct points. It's not even about banishing. I think that banishment is it, it, it has been abused. Yeah, that a, a club side, maybe they're an official attack uh, cameraman, or you now banish them. It's about, you don't even, apart from, you find from, them, you, you, find them you, deduct, you deduct points and goals. Better you keep hitting them hard, all those things will stop. So, uh, with the game being played on TV, we've heard all those things before. Uh, you should be on uh, camera, friend. we've heard everything that, it's not, it's not a new, um, uh, what is it called, like Gusso is saying, it's about enforcement. If you don't enforce all these things, all the plans, all the good ideas, everything will just be on paper and not will happen. But James, this sounds to me like uh, we're, we're almost going to break now, but this sounds to me like um, we are just starting from the scratch. Yeah. Then why don't we just like take a year break and fix everything before we get back home? 
Well, so, well um, the, uh, because you know, you it's, know, it's already in shambles. Yeah, I understand. Me. But you know, taking a break. I mean, what about the players? What would they be doing? It's not everybody that have the opportunity to go out. Okay, I think they should draw legal framework. Draw legal framework. The thing is, even the thing is, the thing is, if if it means just ten teams that are ready to meet up with the the laid down rules and every, just go ahead. It's not a must that. Every, there are some teams in Europe, the, 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 the league, they just made up of 10 teams and they run their, their league well and everything runs smooth. But I want we just we run 20 teams, 20 teams 20 and you start teams. hearing all these um, excuses, all these issues. And if it's about, if it's just 10, 15, just go ahead with it. If these, these are the teams who, who, who meet up with the requirements, I mean, just go ahead and do it. It's not all about the league we start now, we keep hearing the same, the same issues and like uh, recycling, you know. So. So to me, I don't know. The, the body just have to just sit down and let us know what they really want to do with the league. I mean, we, we can't continue like this. Mm. Okay, James, the producer is saying we do not even have time to uh, go on a break, so we have to do everything we, we have in, in this segment. Yeah. Uh, let's make a short trip to Ghana now. Our president, Anana Akufuado, is backing the Black Stars to do well at, at the World Cup. And quickly, I'll, because he's been reacting to criticisms mm. uh, that has come to Otoado. And of course, some Ghanaians are not happy that Ghana will be going to uh, the FIFA World Cup with a part-time coach, so to say. Mm. And he said, um, what is always a problem? What is always a problem is ministers, president, and other influencing players on coaches. We don't want it uh, that way because we have confidence in the people you have chosen. I think we've got a very good technical team of Otoado, Chris Houghton, George Burton, and Didi Dramani. We've got a very good set of people to guide our, our players. So we should leave them to work because they are the best combination for us and the rest of us will do our best to support them. Quickly, Otoado is getting the highest support from Ghana. I think in Ghana, mm. the president yeah. is actually rooting for him. Yeah, um, good one from the president. I mean, uh, what more the, the player want uh, than getting support, motivation from Though the... Though it was said that he actually, I don't know, it was on confirmed report that said he actually wanted Otwadu. Why mm. did GFA wanted Chris Hutton mm. to take charge of the playoff against the Super Eagles of Nigeria? So it wouldn't be a surprise if that this, is, this support is exactly. coming from So it's now left anyway, for... Anyway, whatever, whichever way, it is very necessary. Yes, exactly, because you need all the support. And what better way to get the support than uh, getting it from the number one uh, citizen of the country, you know? So let's just... Um, uh, hope that the, the players will be able to use his word of advice and encouragement to do well at the World Cup. Because the Ghanaian players, the, the, the Ghanaian people, they, 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 are, they, are not, they are not happy with the, the performance of the team. You saw what they did in the preseason, uh, the friendly games they played against Brazil and Nicaragua. I mean, the, those performances were not too encouraging. So the, it's enough reason to, to, to strike fear in, in the minds of uh, football fans in Ghana, you know. So it's not left for the players and the coaching crew now to now sit down and map out a good strategy that will help the team to do well at the World Cup. They can't go to the World Cup and afford to mess up. They didn't do well at the AFCON. They, they, they didn't well enough to qualify for the World Cup. So now they, they are the, in the big stage and um, I mean, you can't get the and, and lose scandalous. They, they have to better the performance of the 2014 edition. Everybody, anytime you're talking about the Blacks, I always take us back to 2010. That was a very, very solid squad. You know, everything that faced that team mm. had to go through a lot. A lot. You know, even so. Even mighty Uruguay. Yeah, even yeah. Germany had to, had to go through yeah. a lot. Yeah. The, even Uruguay, even for the handball, and that thing was already underway. Even who knew, maybe they would have even got into the final, you know. So, um, the president has said his own. It's not left for the coaching crew, it's not left for the players to come out and prove to everybody that they are the good side who will give the not only Ghana, even Africa, a good representation at the World Cup. Mm. James Agoribi, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you, Femi. So please continue to watch out for our daily countdown as we continue at the countdown to the 2022 FIFA World Cup, of course, uh, in Qatar. And of course, uh, a former, uh, uh, former uh, Uruguay legend, I'm talking about, or Uruguay legend, I meant to say, uh, Diego Lugano. He's saying that the group age of the 2025 World Cup is a group of revenge because if you look at it, Uruguay, they've had business uh, with uh, all the other five, uh, the other three opponents. I'm talking about Ghana, I'm talking about Portugal, and of course, uh, South Korea. But of course, we'll be talking about that uh, some other time. So, this is where we'll be drawing the curtain on an Adjust Super Fans Forum today. Don't forget to uh, watch out for our daily countdown as we prepare uh, for the 2025 World Cup. So, in about two weeks' time, of course, we will have clubs uh, release their players uh, for that uh, tournament. Until next time, you said have fun and remain, of course. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Thank you.